Um, I was asked to give a word of encouragement um, to the saints in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so today I'm going to be touching on um, four basic topics, um, covetousness, survival, worration, and healing. Um, amen. So the scriptural context that I'll be basing it on is Matthew 6, 19 through 33. So covet covetousness, some people may not know what it means. So it means being um, greedy, grasping or showing strong desire for material possession. So Matthew 6, 19, 21 says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven and where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will also be so your treasure meaning whatever it is if it's material possessions person places or things nothing should come before god god is always providing for you um so that being said, we have stimulus money. Some people are still working. We're getting stimulus money. We're getting extra resources. And so $100 here or something may not be as much as it used to be for you. It may not put a dent in your pocket as much. You can help people with missions, um, food for banks, and help your neighbors that are out of work. So what I mean by that is we just don't want to store up our riches. You know, some people feel that their bank account has to be a certain balance in order to actually have self-worth, and that shouldn't be. So make sure you give to others. And so also Matthew 6, 24 says, no one can serve two masters. So you're either going to love one or hate the other. So it says you cannot serve both God and money. So that doesn't mean don't try to make money, don't try to provide for your families. What that means is don't let the money consume you. Don't let the money be the end all be all. Because as we know, money can devalue as well. Okay, so your only value is in Christ. Okay, your only value and your well-being and the person that sees all, excuse me, the guy that sees all, knows all and provides all is always there. Um. So in this time, we also have fear of the unknown. So we go into this survival mode, right? So we got to make sure our bank account has this amount in savings. We got to start selling. We got to start doing this and this and this. But if we go to Matthew 19, 25, 33, it says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Okay. So if we think about it, it's some people in other countries and even here they don't they may only have a couple of outfits but there's the provision is there okay and also it talks about the birds the birds in the air they don't store up in the barns they fly freely and god provides for them so how much more valuable are you than birds okay so when we really think about it if we keep worrying about tomorrow it doesn't add one hour to our lives okay so we have to make sure that we stay grounded and understand how god provides it may not be exactly what you want to wear it may not be exactly what you need um excuse me what you want but it's what you need so i've never seen the righteous forsaken or received begging bread and god cares for his children so you may not be the perfect I, um, upstanding person, but think about all the times God gave you a can of beans or whatever you needed to eat. He was there. So it may not be the particular shelter or transportation you want, but it's what you need. So whether it's under a bridge when it's raining, whether it's um, whether it's in a neighbor's house, if it's a loved one's house that let you lay your, your head there, whatever it was, you survived to make it another day. And that's why we call God Jehovah Jireh. He's forever providing. So for those of you that may be out of work or whatever the case may be in your situation, just know that God is always there and we thank him and we bless him for all the blessings around us. I think this is a time that we're not looking at, we, we just need to not look at just every little thing that's not going wrong, but start counting your blessings. I promise you, if you start writing down your blessings, it'll get your mind off of everything going on around you and focus on the God who gives and takes away. Amen. So um, lastly, we're going to get to God as a healer, okay? Yet we must work our faith. So 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. God spoke the sun, moon, and stars into existence. So how much more can your tongue and your beliefs in him do the same? So what I mean by that is God made us in his image, in his likeness. It says every day we can put on the mind of Christ, okay? And it says life and death are in the power of your tongue. he equipped you when he created you to do these things so we must have faith that he can heal all right so we see in the following passage that i'm going to read to you um that the son of god gave out healing like he was just passing it out like oprah like you get a healing you get it. and he's still doing it okay but persons had to be in order and they had to be in line so persons had to ask for healing had faith it could be done and their faith made them whole so we look at Mark 5, 20. It's a little long. I'll just do a summation of it. Mark 20, excuse me, Mark 6. I'm, I'm messing up, sorry. Mark 5, 20 through 43, okay? So we see the woman with the issue of blood in this passage. So she had an issue of blood for 12 years. And she just felt in her mind, like, if I just touch him, if I just touch the hem of God's garment, I'm going to be made whole. I don't care what anybody's telling me, no physician, what, I'm going to be made whole. And when she touched the hem of God's, excuse me, of Jesus' garment, which Jesus is the son of God, okay, for those that may not know. And so when she touched the hem of the garment, she, the, the blood dried up, she was healed, she was made whole. Um, a father of a daughter came to Jesus and said, my daughter needs to be healed. And Jesus said, go back, lay hands on her, and she was healed. So it's the act of believing that God is able to heal, okay? And a lot of times we get so bound up in fear that we don't activate what God has equipped us of. God has equipped us to just ask him and believe, and it shall be done. So we have to always remember that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, OK, that means you may be exposed to something and not even know it, but the weapon did not prosper. The gates of hell shall not prevail against your household and yourself. You need to take up your bed and walk. So let's stop sitting there picking our wounds and looking at everything that's not going right and put on the mind of Christ. Because when we put on the mind of Christ, he can help us through things and he can show us different ways to maneuver. He, I promise y'all, he can show you different ways to maneuver, monies, whatever it is, and things just will work out, okay? You have to know how to be a base and a bound, meaning know how to live in contentment with much and know how to live in contentment with lack. And what you'll realize is your lack is always somebody else's much, okay? Also, in this time, you want to walk in the power of an all-seeing, all-knowing God who cares so much for you. So when you repent, that is what you need to do. When you sin, you repent, okay? You come quickly to the Father. Don't wait. Don't sit there and let the devil beat you up over your head. You got to come boldly to the throne of great grace and repent, ask God to forgive you, and get back on the man wagon. Go ahead and get back close to God. Put him first in all your thoughts. Each day is a new day. Hallelujah. Each prayer that you give is new. Okay. 24 seven pray without ceasing. Prayer does not mean that you have to um, get on your knees. You can literally talk to God all day long. I promise you it works. Okay. So put your hands with the plow, pray without ceasing. Okay. Never co um, covet or put any persons, places, or things before God, okay? All these things on earth, they're going to perish. But God is the only person, excuse me, only, God is the only one that can give you eternal, everlasting life, okay? I'm sorry. God is the tr Trinity. We know that, right? So Jesus was the person form. And now we have the Holy Spirit that lives through us, okay? So he's always present. He's always there. Even when you didn't know that you needed him and you wanted him to be there, he always was there. Now, if you're wanting salvation if, and meaning like if you want to um, give your life to Christ, um, you can inbox me and I can send you some scripture passages. But the main thing I just want to let people know is that we have to believe and trust in God and know that his will will be done in our lives and everything that the world may see as bad doesn't mean that it's bad in your life because we know that all things work together 
for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So we thank you guys for your time and you have a blessed day.